So that was a right-hand transcription of Dave McKenna playing One Morning in May, which is a great song by Hoagie Carmichael. It's not really a left-hand transcription. The left hand is just there to support the right hand. The song is in the key of D major, and I'll show you some of the chords. It starts with the one chord, D major 7. It goes to B7, which is the 5 of 2. Then E minor 7, the 2 chord. And then A7, the 5 chord. One chord again, and then D flat seven, which is a five of three. So after the five of three, we go to three, which is F sharp minor seven, and then B seven again, five of two, back at one, it then goes to the five chord but only temporarily. This is an in-between chord. This five chord doesn't go back to one, but changes into A minor seven, which is a two of four. So now we're gonna be going to the four chord. So two of four, five of four, D seven. And now our four chord, G major six or G major seven. Then this four chord turns into a minor four chord. So this is G minor six, and this chord resolves back to one. That resolution is right here. That chord isn't in the key of D major, but that resolution is really nice, and it's really common. You'll also hear in this song, uh, sometimes it's played as a G minor 7, and then a C7, resolving again to 1. In that case, it's the same harmony, it's just different roots. So one melody I like is uh, right at the end of the first chorus, right here. to the recording, at first you may just think that it was this. These two notes are pretty soft. So I like how part of the melody is loud and the other part is soft. Uh, it sounds like this. This is different than accenting one note or several notes, uh, accenting to play louder. So like this. In that case, I played this and this A and this F sharp uh, louder. So that's nice how everything up to this point is soft and then after A, it's loud. Another nice one uh, comes a little bit later. So we start with a surround notes or approach notes leading to A. We walk up A minor seven. Seven. And I like how the melody uh, accents or brings out this F. So we're on a G6 right now, and you'll notice that that F is really dissonant. Um, it's not part of the chord, but it's part of surround notes that lead to G. And this is followed up immediately with highlighting another dissonant note that's part of the next chord. This is the third of the G minor six, but uh, it's not in the key of D, and so these two dissonant notes in a row 
really draw out this kind of dark part of the song that then gets resolved back to one. So it's really nice how the way that melody comes down uh, that it kind of foreshadows what's coming. So again, Another one that's great is starting on the three chord that's um, going to be going to then five of two and then two. So this one starts on the flat five of F sharp minor seven, walks up to the third of B seven comes down E minor 7. All those notes are E minor 7. And at the bottom, we have approach notes going to this C sharp, which is the third of A, but it's coming from this D, which is the seventh of E. So this 7 going to 3 is a 7-3 resolution, which occurs in all descending 5th chords. So here we have the E chord going to A, going to D. All these are going down in 5th. So uh, it's, it's special um, anytime we have this, this harmony, and it's a pulling harmony that we have in all uh, chords that are, that are descending. So uh, that's kind of a special way that that one ends. Another great one uh, is in about the same place of the song. about this is how long the middle note is held. This B is held for three and a half beats, and uh, I'll count it out for you. And two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two. So this is an interesting length to hold this note. If I played this first melody, I would probably start the next melody sooner. And this, this one is great. It just fits over the chord, which is E minor 7. Uh, it can really be played anywhere. And so I'll play it uh, a beat sooner, which is, which is where I would probably play it. It just fits nicely together, uh, it feels complete, we end on the D7, and we're ready to start playing another idea. Another way uh, would be to hold on to the B much longer, and then play this next idea maybe after four beats. But by playing after three and a half beats, which is in the middle between the two and a half and the four and a half, it really makes that next melody interesting rhythmically. It puts it in a different place over the measure. And so uh, it just, it's, it's really nice. Notice then that uh, that pushes the next available place to, to play something a little bit further ahead because uh, this idea then kind of spilled over into the next chord, which is D. And so the next uh, idea that he plays is, is this really fast double time idea to kind of get to where he wants to go next. Um, 
the other option there would be to not play anything and then start up uh, right there just after some space. One more that I really like is um, starting on uh, the E minor 7 and uh, it's on beat 2. One. So I like this because uh, it starts going up, comes down, goes up, and comes back down. So it's nice that it, it's bookended that way. <laughs> 